Welcome to a new Fixing Fashion video. So in this video we're going to show you how to take care of your clothes, so you can keep them longer. For instance by having the right washing settings, or knowing how to store your clothes properly, or making your own detergents. Kind of everything that helps you to keep your clothes longer, so you don't have to throw them away. So let's say you have a stain in your clothes, for instance from ink. But I don't know how to take care of this, but Alicia knows. Hi, I'm Alicia and I'm going to show you how to remove the stain. And we can imagine there are many stain removers out there, but often the stain removers are quite chemical. And the cool thing is that we made a list of nine ingredients that you can remove every common stain with, and they're even natural. So let me show you the nine. In that list we have green soap or dishwash soap, lemon, vinegar, toothpaste, table salt, baking soda, hydrogen peroxide, which you can find in the pharmacy, and bowel soap or oxygen soap. So this stain is for instance ink, and for that we need to leave it with toothpaste for a few minutes and then wash it off with vinegar and baking soda. Then for instance if you have a rust stain, you can easily remove it in some lemon water and hot water and then rub it out. Then you might add a coffee party and this you can easily remove with some vinegar and some gluten soap or dishwash soap and then leave it in till it's out. So these were just a few examples on how to treat your stains. In the Academy we made a good chart of the most common stains on how to treat them with these products and how to use them. So let us know how it went for you. Next up, prepare washing. So washing is a quite underestimated task. And as we're all clothing owners, it's good to know how to take care of your clothes. A few changes over time in your washing routine can change a lot in the quality of your clothes. But before you do that, we need to know a little bit of the details. So let me show you. So first of all, the washing labels. You might have seen them before. You can mainly find them next to the brand or most of the time in your side seams. So the washing label tells me from what material it's made from and how to wash it. And that's been told in five main icons. So for instance, here, I can see that the tumble dryer has two dots, which means that I can use the tumble dryer on an average temperature. All these details and all these icons you can find in the Academy, match them up with your washing label and find out what your washing settings are. But there are a few types of clothing where you need to be extra careful with, so let me show you those. So first of all, something that needs extra care, and that's our wooden sweaters. Whether it's mohair, cashmere, or wool, they all don't absorb that much smell. So if it's really smelly, just hang them outside and give it a little fresh air. If you do want to wash them, do it with a cold hand wash and not with a hot temperature as they shrink a lot. For instance here, with this sweater, we did it in a washing machine with a hot temperature and it shrunk and it even felted together. And then silk blouses. As they tend to lose their color a lot, as with hotter temperatures they become a bit yellowish, which is their original color, uh, good wash is to do it with a cold hand wash. And then fluffy sweaters. As with wearing them a lot, they get these fluffy balls on them, like here. And these are created by friction and these are speeded up on in the washing machine or in the dryer. And you can easily remove them with an old razor or if you need to do a lot with a machine. So take some time, but you will be surprised how it goes from worn out to new. And then leather jackets. <laughs> you don't need to wash them, you only need to maintain them with some leather grease. You have them in colored ones or just normal ones. You can use an old cloth 
or an old worn out garment as your grease cloth and you maintain it with circle motions on top of the leather. Then suede is also leather but a different layer of the skin. And don't maintain them with grease as they only become dirtier. You just need a sweat brush and brush the dirt off. And then it looks new again. Then jeans. Jeans are made from a durable denim and they adapt to your body shape. But if you wash them a lot, they tend to lose that fit. So the real jeans lovers don't wash them at all or instead of washing, they put them in the freezer for two days. But we can imagine it's a bit too hardcore. So uh, we will advise at least if you wash them, don't put it higher than 30 degrees. So now we know a bit more about our garments. Now it's time for some color sorting. So now we have three piles in front of us, black, white and colors. And we don't want to mix them up as the white really absorbs the colors or the blacks. And you don't want to mix up the colors and the blacks together as they really get lose their vibrant colors or they become a bit grayish. So now we know how to separate our clothes. Next up, washing detergents. In this chapter, we're going to talk about the world of detergents. As there, as you can see, there are many out there. So you have powder, liquid, tabs, nuts, and cloths. Some are more natural, like the nuts. Some are better packaged and non-plastic packaged as the powder. And some are just easier to use, like the liquid. And in this section, you have them in wool, sportswear, black, colored, and white. They all take ultimate care for your washing, but we can imagine that for an average person, it's kind of a lot to have all these detergents at home. So we can give you one quick tip. At least don't use the white detergent for your colored and black wash as it contains bleach or chloride. And that might ruin your color wash and black wash. So don't do that. If we look at the ingredients of the packages, we see that it quite often contains chemical ingredients. So now we're going to make our own detergents as we have the power then to know what's inside and to make it as natural as we want. So let's make the soap. For this soap, I need a vegetable soap, a grater, and a pot full of water. So I choose a vegetable soap that is made from olive oil and it is purely natural and doesn't contain any palm oil so I don't harm any orangutans. It is 300 grams and I can make around 18 liters of washing detergent with this, which is quite a lot. So first of all, I'm gonna grate it. Action. And now you can pour in your soap in boiling water and let it boil for an hour. Now you can wait. So now this is done, I can turn it off and leave it overnight. Hopefully it can be like slapen, now we can bottle it up. So now we have a washing detergents and this is really good for a general wash. But if you want to go more specific, you can add baking soda to it for a white wash, as this is used as a natural bleacher. Or you can add vinegar for your black wash, as this keeps the color vibrant. Now, whilst we're at it, let's talk about fabric softeners, as they do make your fabric really smell nice and make it soft, but they do contain quite some chemicals. So a good alternative, and that's natural, is vinegar. Only we don't like the smell of vinegar, so we can add some essential oils to it 
or what we did is adding some orange peels to it. So you can find the recipes and all the information in the academy. So now we have all the detergents ready, which brings us to the next chapter, washing. So before we start washing, a quick checklist. First of all, reduce washing. You don't need to wash your clothes after every wear. And the more you wash it, the more it decreases the quality. First, empty the pockets, as you don't want any paper pulp from the to-do list or any sharp materials from your keys, for instance, to rip the pockets or any other clothes in your laundry. Then, zippers and buttons, as you want to close the zippers, as they might get caught in fabrics. And buttons, you want to open them, as they might rip off from your garment. And now you can put it in the washing machine. And then washing detergents. As on your washing detergent drawer section, you have also icons. This is for your pre-wash, as you can use, for instance, baking soda or any other stain removers for this. Here you can put your powder washing detergent in. The flour is mainly for the fabric softeners. For instance, with us, you can put your vinegar in there. And this section is for the liquid washing detergents. Not every washing machine has this one, so then it's better to use a bulb for the liquid washing detergent and put it on top of your laundry. And then you're ready for washing. Yeah. Next up, drying. So even with drying and ironing, there's a few things to consider as you can still ruin the fabric if you don't pay too much attention. So your default approach should be line drying outside as the UV lights from the sun kills the bacteria on the fabric and makes it more cleaner. The outside air does also give it a nice smell. So you leave your smaller knits like t-shirts or your woven like jeans or a shirt on the clothing hanger or on the line. And chunk your knits kind of deforms a lot when it's wet, so don't put them on the line, but leave them flat to dry, for instance, on the clothing rack. So then, what about the dryer machine? As it does come out nice and soft, but it has a few downsides, as it costs a lot of energy, and the friction and the heat might ruin the fabric or even shrink it. So our advice will be, hang it outside, or only use it when you really need to. So even with ironing, there's a few things to consider as first of all you need to read the washing labels if you can iron it or not and on what temperature and if you iron make sure it's on the right temperature settings as you might burn or melt down the fabric so that was everything about drying next up storage so properly storing your clothes can help out a lot on the lifetime of your garment the ultimate wardrobe you want it to be uv light free and dust free as uv lights tends to wear out the fibers a lot but also fades out the colors a lot. So if you don't have a closed wardrobe, but an open wardrobe, then we recommend to put, for instance, wear that you don't often wear or seasonal wear, to put them in a clothing bag. Or, for instance, a box. And with this, we like to lay wooden sweaters in flat. So this box also stops moths from getting in. For the rest of your clothes, you can use, for instance, the regular mud balls, but they kind of smell like a public toilet. So we recommend to use the cedar wood balls, and you can leave these on the shelves. Or you can use the cedar wood rings. And these you can put over your clothing hanger. And then your ultimate wardrobe is ready. Okay, that was it. Hopefully you find it useful. I think it's knowledge for life, as it extends the lifetime of your garment. If you want more information, go to our academy. And if you have any questions, go to Discord. Now, you know how to take care of your clothes, but accidents can still happen, which brings us to the next videos, repair and upgrade. Thanks for watching this one, and hope to see you in the next video.